This week, let's take a good look at Raleigh RPX 400. I wanted to do some more film comparisons to Tri-X like I began earlier in the year. But to keep things consistent, rather than do them every now and then, I went ahead and got 49 different film stocks, everything I could get in 35mm from B&H and Freestyle. So unless they were out of stock, I got a roll of it. Now if this part of the video seems familiar, it's because I'm using this portion of the video for all 49 of them rather than record it 49 times. So if you want to skip ahead to the H and D curves or the prints, time codes are right over here. For those of you that haven't seen this part of the video before, here's what I've done. So I wanted to use each film with the exact same shot, which is a headshot of me with a Kodak Gray Card Plus, which happens to have a red, blue, and green patch, a cyan, magenta, yellow patch, and then a dark and a neutral flesh tone. Then, with those shots taken, I bracketed every shot in third of a stop so that we can make sure we have a negative of equal shadow density to the base target film of Tri-X. Now, the reason I use Tri-X is because it's just been around for a long time and it's a very popular film. So it's a good base film to compare everything to. Then, once everything was developed, which was developed in D76 at stock for the manufacturer's recommended time, I printed everything on Ilford using the exact same aperture, contrast settings, developer, and everything. The only thing I changed was my exposure time, and that was to make sure that I compensated for any base fog variation from one film stock to another. Other than that, everything was left the same so that we can have a comparison of just the qualities of the film. Now there's going to be some uh, differences in contrast, especially on the high end, and that's because the manufacturers getting their development time may not have used the same target that Kodak used for Tri-X. And that's okay. We're not looking at the overall contrast for everything. What we're really looking at is grain characteristics, uh, tonality, how the film treats the shadows versus the highlights, that sort of thing. And uh, we're looking at spectral sensitivity, thus the gray card plus rather than just a regular gray card. So we're going to go ahead and look at H and D curves, which if you saw one of my earlier videos on sensitometry, I like to use pen and paper and make my graphs. However, my wife was really, really ready to make sure I was done with this project. So she put everything into a spreadsheet for you all. So even though I don't like them, I want to show them to you thanks to her. Then we're going to go ahead and look at the prints side by side with the same print made from Tri-X. And from there, you can decide if you like the film and if you want to go and use it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the curves and then we'll go to the prints. Here we have Tri-X in our blue once again and in red Raleigh RPX 400. We have our typical shadow curve down at the toe. Uh, decent separation once we get a stop or two in. And then we have a nice good straight line. It does slope a little bit like it's going to shoulder but I think it's just a graceful curve at the top for a straight line. So we should have overall good tonal separation. We don't have that bellying out that we see with Tri-X, which means we will probably have decent mid-tone separation uh, where Tri-X kind of lost it there for uh, about a stop, stop and a half before going back to its straight line area. So we may see a little bit better separation in the lower mid upper shadow areas, but the Tri-X bellying out there may just be a little bit more subtle than reality shows. So let's see if what shows on paper actually turns out in the prints. All right, here we are with Raleigh RPX 400, Tri-X 400 on this side. And next to each other, they are very, very similar. Our prints look almost exactly the same. We're getting a little bit of difference here in the skin tone. 
I would say this is actually more like what we got with some of our Ilford films, but overall the look is very, very close. We are getting regular spectrum sensitivity and identical to the Tri-X. Clearly panchromatic, good contrast, good detail uh, on the large scale. We'll look here zoomed in in just a moment. And how it renders from dark to medium, very different than the other Raleigh films. Again, you'll see those if you watch those, depending on when I release them, either before or after this one. I would say other than the more Ilford-like response in these high tones, these are very, very similar. Okay, let's zoom in a little bit and get a closer look at sharpness and grain. I should also mention, in case I just forgot, uh, this did come in at a 400, so full film speed from this. Okay, here with the close-up of the first section, we are getting nice sharp grain. We are getting nice tonality from shadow to medium and grain side by side, they don't look that much different. If I had to, I guess I would give Tri-X just a slight edge, but otherwise they are pretty darn close to each other. Here with the shaded shoulder, we are getting, again, a good sense of that uh, grain structure on the background. We're getting a good sense of how the shadows blend to the mid-tones there in the folds. Otherwise, not a whole lot to say here because the performance is pretty close to one another. Here on the lightest side of the shoulder, we are seeing uh, just a little drop in sharpness. I'm looking to see if it's a camera misfocus. However, clearly on the back of the collar, it the, the focus is softer so it gets sharper as it comes forward but it doesn't seem to get as sharp before it begins to fall off again so while we're getting good grain and we're getting decent detail it's just not quite as sharp as some of the other raleigh films we've looked at which had extremely high resolution for what they are and in this case i feel like we're getting a little bit lower and here on the face, we are getting decent detail. We can see the pores in my nose, my forehead. And I would say we are definitely getting more of that Ilford-like response on the separation of high tones. So my bridge here has this white highlight through it, and again on my forehead. But it's not quite separating as much when it goes to the gray on either side gray on either side, they tend to blend a little bit more, uh, giving a lower contrast appearance in those highlights. So the overall contrast is the, is the same, but treatment within the highlights is a little bit different. So this is more like an Ilford. Uh, and that's just a, a matter of the curve structure of the film. Not a defect by any means. But overall, I would say it's a decent film. It's not as high resolution as Tri-X, I think, in my opinion, looking at these side by side, it's not a camera misfocus. It just doesn't seem as sharp, which is a little disappointing considering how high resolution so far all of the Raleigh films have been that I've seen. All right, that's gonna do it for this week. Uh, thank you again for watching. If you would like to help support this channel, you can go to my Patreon page or my merchandise page down in the links in the description. And we will see you next time. Thank you for watching.